Hey, Dee Dee back here corrupting youth one day and one youth at a time. Okay, what we got here is an old six jaw chuck that I used on the Monarch 10 Ws quite a bit and I adapted it to this Axelson because I could find it pretty handy to fix thin wall stuff. I just repaired the tripod you are viewing from. <laughs> I'm kind of hard on things around here. Okay, what I have in my hand here is a uh, transmission counter shaft out of I don't know what. But often uh, items like this transmission um, counter shafts are gauge accurate because you know they got to be accurate. So let's take this transmission counter shaft and I'll slide it into that chuck, okay? Right about there. Now I'm going to start turning it. This might take a time or two. And when I put stuff in a chuck, like this, a jaw chuck, now, you know, there's a little bit of play on the jaws, so they move. There's a little bit of play in the scroll in there, so it can move. So the thrust is going to be that way. So as I tighten the chuck, I slowly turn that until it stops. Then I snug it, okay? Now, let's see if I can get this on there and I'll look through the camera. Hopefully, you will be able to see what I see. I'll, I'll triple check. Let's see if that's not gonna go too far. Okay, I'll look through the camera here. How are we doing? I think you can see that okay. Okay, let's roll this chuck. Well, that's about one thousandths uh, run out. Let's try for a little bit better. Hopefully I can get my hand in there still. Okay. Yeah, I can. I'm going to rotate it just, just slightly. I feel a few bumps, but you kind of do. Uh, I'll try that. Let's try that. That's less than a half thousandths run out, okay? Okay, now let's move the indicator this way. Can't go too far because I'll run into the tripod. Let's see where we're at. Now that's pretty darn good. How far is that out there? Oh my. They'll loosen all the locks, huh? Look at that there, just approximately four inches. Let's move it out. The rest of the way. Right about there, huh? How much run out we got there? Two thousandths, and that's about eight inches out. I don't think that's too bad. Let's, let's play with that a little bit here. I hope I can corrupt even more use. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try that direction. Oh, I think I made it worse. Now we're still hanging about two thousandths, aren't we? Let me try that one more time. I don't know if I can get that better. But does your truck do that? Let's see what happens. Uh, I think you got a little bit better. Uh, we got it to one thousandths. Let's see where it is over here. Why, it's almost dead true there, isn't it? Okay, I will show you how to do that. I'll be back. Yeah, here's the uh, back plate for that uh, 
a solid steel bison 12 and a half inch uh, three jaw chuck with a four inch spindle hole. Uh, probably with its back plate, I guess, weigh 140 pounds, probably. Um, I uh, refaced this because uh, you see me check these on the spindles. I removed the pins and, uh, and check them for slop on the locating taper here. Well, clean it in here. And I, I don't believe I recut the taper in this because it looked good. But it, it was loose on the taper. I didn't. It had a few chip marks in it from chips getting caught in it. But the taper is still good. And uh, the ink I'm wiping off, uh, I was using to test the fit. But I did this uh, in the milling machine. Uh, using a wall hopper automatic facing head uh, to cut this surface until the locating taper fit, fit the spindle. Now this is the chuck that came with the machine. It was, uh, and I think I'll find it useful. <laughs> I do. Um, it had quite a bit of run out and uh, now that I've got the uh, uh, it fit in the spindle good and uh, I'm going to have to uh, uh, get it mounted and then trim the edge here. Let's see, let's look around at that side. This thing's heavy. I have to trim this edge uh, just to true it up. And uh, I'll get that chuck back on and uh, get it on the spindle and uh, check the run out. Okay. I got into woodworking uh, years after doing machine work. And uh, my uh, uh, father-in-law was a Finnish carpenter. So my wife really liked me to get into woodworking. And uh, I, I never do woodworking videos because uh, I do it like a machine is a very good thing crazy. But I need to, I need to drill um, one and an eighth inch hole in some uh, thin oak for uh, horse taper for uh, shank rack for this leg. And I can't find a hole saw or a drill except for this uh, drill with a uh, three-quarter inch shank. And I don't have my radio drill going, so I'm going to do it in the axis and let's watch that. And of course, using a KDK toolbox really makes this job good. <laughs> we'll see if it works. Okay, here's the okay. Here's what I got. Let's do it. Looks like it's all the way through. I'll get a little more. Yep. You've seen it here, and you've seen it live. I will be back. Well, you know, in a one-car garage, uh, Tool storage can be tricky. <laughs> and I uh, I come up with this um, out of some uh, remnants of wood that uh, were from other projects. And uh, this thing's got a little bit of weight on it, but it's strong enough. It's um, oh, about, uh, that's about a half inch thick piece of oak with uh, maple, uh, 
trim around it and, it and it'll flex like a bow or something. You could put a string on it and shoot arrows through one of the holes. Then I come up with this box here. This is a piece of uh, local walnut. We have a really good hardware store, or not hardwood store here, that uh, the guy has a little sawmill and he saws up the local trees here. And this is a piece of, uh, of walnut from a, from a real huge tree. And uh, it was, uh, it's kind of lightweight, it's a little bit punky. So he threw it in its kind of seconds pile and you can buy stuff pretty cheap. And I don't know, I think that cost about four or five dollars for the material. But it's a pretty big board, had throw most of it away. So anyway, I got the KDK stuff sitting there. And that's more than a hundred pounds just on this part here. So I got, I got that into... Uh, the studs on the wall and I got to build more uh, things like this uh, over on the uh, other wall and stuff for the milling machine but I thought you might uh, get a kick out of that it's uh, since I don't have room for toolboxes and drawers and stuff then I have to put more on the wall and I guess this would be a display a tool display okay I will be back well, I'll do a little quick look over at the tools um, I'll be uh, using on that axle son. Um, got a uh, internal grooving tool here, got a bump knurler, got a high speed cutoff, got carbide cutoff, got a CNMG, got a grooving Iskar. And we got some profiling tools here, DNMG, left hand, right hand, oh, good old high speed, and a uh, micro 100 finishing tool. And more stuff down here, odds and ends, round the corner tools, got, uh, uh, let me pull that out and set it here. This is what they call uh, the threading bar. So I got a, uh, Couple of lay down threading insert tool holders there. Internal, you know, you flip it around, see? I'll take it over to the tool post so you can see that. KDK. Yeah. Okay, there's your internal. You know, you want to go external. Oh, these things are heavy. You have to set it down. That's almost five pounds. External. <laughs> okay. Too much fun around here, I guess. Okay, I will be back. I got a lot going.